Welcome to our Palm Sunday reading and reflection here from Wakefield Cathedral. My name's Canon Peter, and it's lovely to be with you, to be worshipping together in our homes. The Gospel reading this morning is from Mark chapter 11, verse 1. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately, as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying that cult? They told them what the Lord Jesus had said, and they allowed him to take it. Then they brought the cult to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went to Bethany with the twelve. Here ends the reading. And as we reflect on our Gospel reading, I want to propose three virtues for us to consider for Palm Sunday. Simplicity, humility and courage. By virtue, I mean the intrinsic quality of values that were part of who Jesus was and that shaped his life. And I believe we find these three virtues and values at the heart of our Saviour Jesus on this Palm Sunday. And the Archbishop of York has recently highlighted these three virtues as one that the Church should return to and be shaped by in the 2020s and as we come out of the pandemic. The question for us is this, how are we being called to demonstrate these virtues in our everyday lives? at the moment. Maya Angelou said this, courage is the most important of all virtues because without courage you can't practice any other virtue consistently. We all need courage at the moment, whether it's the courage to roll up our sleeves and take the vaccine or the courage to get up and face another day of lockdown restrictions and isolation, the courage to make a journey back to the high street, or back to the workplace, or even back to this cathedral. The past year has shone a light on lots of examples of courage in our community. Think of the NHS staff and key workers, or individuals like Captain Tom, or ordinary members of our community working across all sectors who have looked after the well-being of employees and played their part in serving the public good. Perhaps you can identify how courage has been at work in your life. Perhaps there are courageous steps that you have taken or others have taken around you. As I look back, I am struck by the courage of my community. Back in South East London, where I've just moved from, um, almost overnight, I had strangers one year ago from now Um, coming to the door of the vicarage, bringing bags of food and offers of help to um, enable us to keep our food bank open um, throughout the crisis that we faced. It was so encouraging to have strangers knocking on the door and people we didn't know offering help, taking risks, taking those small steps of courage to help us serve destitute families in our communities. 
Well, the Palm Sunday narrative we hear today is a story of courage. Jesus demonstrates this as he rides in to Jerusalem. He doesn't avoid the place of his suffering. No, he courageously and willingly goes to the cross. He is prepared to do what needs to be done to heal our world and restore humanity to a relationship with his Father. He is courageous in the face of his critics, those who sneer when he is being lavished with fragrant perfume by a friend in preparation for his death. He is courageous before Pilate, standing firm in the face of political oppression and violence. He is even courageous in the face of death, speaking words of forgiveness from the cross, words of hope to a criminal. He boldly enters death, enters the darkness and chaos of the grave for us. And alongside courage, he embodies simplicity and humility. The simplicity of taking nothing with him to the cross. He redeems the world with nothing in his hands and nothing in his pockets. All he offers is himself. His shoulders to carry the burden of the cross. His hands to be pierced with nails, his head to be crowned with thorns. His body is all he has to offer. Our bodies are all we have to offer. Perhaps we can follow his example, offering our bodies, hands, hearts and minds, simply in his service. And he rides to Jerusalem with humility, the humility of a donkey, not in a stretched limousine or an armoured chariot, but humbly on the back of a donkey, a journey that would have been bumpy and full of faltering steps and unpleasant smells. Jesus is a humble king, and he came to make a way for everyone, for those living in poverty, as well as those in palaces for those who need government help in levelling up, as well as those with surplus resources to share. Courage, simplicity, humility. These are the everyday virtues of our Saviour, virtues that shaped his life, and because they had shaped his life, they came naturally at this most crucial of ours. This is the way of the cross, that we are to follow as we make our journey through Holy Week. Virtues that the Church needs as it rebuilds and tackles the injustices highlighted over the past year. Virtues that are needed on the high street to rebuild our economy. Virtues that are needed in our personal lives as we overcome loss, wrestle with fears and exhaustion. The past year has been tough. Tough for all of us, but we have one who loves us, one who has gone ahead of us, one who offers us a fresh start and a new beginning. So let's mark this Palm Sunday with thankfulness for our Saviour and let his embodied example of simplicity, humility and courage mark a path out of lockdown and the rebuilding of our lives, our church, and our world. Amen.